G'day guys and welcome to another install video. You're here bagging it with the best. I'm Jacob, this is Benny, and today we're gonna to be installing an airbag kit to the rear of this GMC Denali. The customer tows a caravan. With the weight on the tow ball and gear in the back, pushes the rear end down, causing spring sag. These airbags will solve that spring sag problem and level the vehicle simply by inflating the airbags. This airbag kit and add-on air control system has an install time of around eight hours. But we're gonna be installing it in a matter of minutes just for you, aren't we Benny? Yep. Let's do it. It is recommended that only a properly qualified person installs the product and carries out maintenance. If you are not qualified and attempt to carry out such work, ensure that all safety equipment is used and safety standards are met. So before we get stuck into the airbag install, I just want to give you a rundown of what you actually get in your airbag kit. I'm also going to give you a rundown on the onboard air supply system we're going to be installing on the vehicle as well. So to get things started, the vehicle specific mounting brackets. These bolt straight into the vehicle suspension. We've got the lower brackets here. They mount straight onto the axle next to the leaf pack. We've got the upper brackets here. They bolt straight into the chassis. Now this vehicle has a massive exhaust running down one side. So to protect the airbag from any heat damage, we're gonna use this heat shield here. So that's gonna do the job for us. Now for the heavy duty Firestone airbags, these come with a lifetime manufacturer's warranty. They are also specced to suit this vehicle's suspension so they'll flex right out with the travel and they'll compress right down and act as a replacement bump stop. So good bit of gear there. Now for many years, we have been supplying into our kits a pre-assembled heavy duty nylon with the protector tubing. Now, when you're routing this under the vehicle, it's gonna keep the nylon tubing well protected with the protector from any scratches of damage and all that sort of thing. And it is also a massive time saver. This little bag of goodies here has all the nuts and bolts. You've got all the air fittings, the inflation valves, the cable ties to secure the airline under the vehicle and a black plastic owner's manual that you can chuck in your glove box, which has the product manual, how to operate the kit, and your step-by-step -step fitting instructions as well. So just on the step-by-step -step fitting instructions, on the last page, you've got your airbag heights, operating heights, and your maximum pressures. So that's really important, so have a read of that. Now, for the onboard air supply system, the customer is gonna be able to inflate and deflate his airbags through a wireless controller, key fob controller. So you got your left and right up and down. We've also got a tire inflation facility. So this inflation coil and wand here can stretch right out. So if you've got a caravan on the back, camper trailer, whatever it is, you can go pump your tires up there and also pump the tires up on the vehicle as well. Now this kit also has a three gallon aluminium lightweight air tank. It's got the SAE J10 approval, which is a must in the automotive industry. And also if you're, you're using this tank on an industrial application, you also need that SAE J10 approval as well. For the pressure, we've got a wireless airbag pressure gauge. That's gonna show the pressures in both the airbags there. So you can see just on there, left and right pressures. Now you can install this gauge into a power outlet, the cigarette lighter. Also has the two sensors here that you can screw right onto the inflation valves on the back, or you can just tee it straight into the tubing where the airbags are. So there's your wireless pressure gauge. We've also got your 12 volt heavy duty compressor which is gonna supply air into the air tank and maintain the pressure in the air tank. You've got your valve block and wireless receiver that pretty much creates a connection there with your wireless controller. So that's pretty much it there. Everything comes in kit form. Benny's knocked up a little L-shaped bracket here. So if you're a handyman, you can knock up something like that. The customer wants to have this all installed in this unused compartment here. Just at the back of the tub. 
So we're going to get that all installed. But first of all, we're going to get stuck into the airbags. Let's do it. To get started with the airbag install, we're going to mark the bump stops and trim them down so they're flush with the bump stop cups. We'll then install the supplied T-nut into the back side of the bump stop. Let's get into it. Now the bump stops are back in the vehicle, it's time to install the upper brackets. You want to select one upper bracket, one countersunk bolt, one 15mm gal tube, a spacer disc, and a 50mm gal tube. So that's the orientation it will be installed in the vehicle. Now another thing to note, these upper brackets are handed. So make sure you refer to the installation instructions to select the correct bracket for the side you're working on. Now that's in, let's pre-fit the lower bracket to the airbag and install the air fitting and then we can install the airbag assembly. So when fitting these lower brackets using the countersunk bolts, I like to use a little bit of Loctite just to keep it nice and secure. You also want to look at the orientation of the airbag to the upper bracket, uh, make sure you get that all correct. So you basically want the airbag facing outboard with the air inlet towards the leaf spring. And you only want to nip these up until you feel the nylon seal engaging. And you can always leak check it afterwards and nip it up even further if you need to. Cool, that's good to go. Now the left hand side's all installed, we're going to move on to the right hand side repeating the same process, but this time install the heat shield. We'll then get on to routing the airline and perform a leak test.
when routing your airline and connecting into the fittings, you always want to make sure you use an airbag man tube cutter or a sharp Stanley blade to get a nice clean cut and make sure there's no damage on the airline. You also want to make sure when routing the airline that you don't secure the airline to any sharp edges or near any heats that can damage it. And what I'm doing here as well is just following any of the factory wiring looms or um, nice brake lines that you can secure it to. Inflate the airbags to perform a final leak test on the fitting and tubing connections. The airbags are all installed. It's now time to move on to the onboard air control and tire inflation system. So we've already pre-drilled all the holes in the back of the tub to bolt everything in. Once we've bolted it all in, we'll then route the tubing down to tee into the airbags and route the wiring. Let's get stuck in. We've now routed the air lines from the valve block and air supply down to the back here. We're going to tee into the airbag lines and to the tire inflation coupler. I'm then going to move on to the wiring and hook into ignition, earth and power. Benny has done an absolutely mint job of this install. The airbags are in there, the onboard air control is ready to go. 
So the last and most important step once everything is installed is to set your airbag operating heights. So refer to your product information manual here, go to the last page of the installation instructions and you'll see your airbag operating height. Now this airbag operating height has been spec for this vehicle suspension. And what you can see here, you've got a five and a half to six and a half inch bag height. Now that is measured from the top plate, the top crimp plate of the airbag to the bottom crimp plate of the airbag. So let's go ahead and measure both sides, make sure they're set, and then we can take some reference points as well. So let's do that. And if you've got the wireless controller set up or switches, use that to inflate the airbags. If not, and you've just got manual inflation, just get a portable compressor or go to a tire inflation facility to pump the airbags up through the manual inflation valves. Okay, so these airbags are sitting at just about five inches. So we need to get anywhere from five and a half to six and a half inches. So I'll just use the wireless controller here just inflate the bag until we get to about six inches. There we go, about six inches on that side. There we go, about six inches on that side. Now that we've set the airbag heights, we need to take a few reference points outside the vehicle. The reference point measurements need to be taken from bottom of the wheel arch to the center of the wheel. So we've got 28 inches here. The good thing about the reference point measurements is that this way it ensures that the bag is sitting at the right height and you don't have to keep going underneath the vehicle and measure the airbags every time you put a load on. So take those reference points. Yours may be different. Don't go by these ones. So set your airbag height get your reference point measurements and away you go. So the other side had about 28 inches and this side has 28 inches as well. So good reference point there. So when you hitch your caravan on, you put load in the back, let it sag down and then you inflate the airbags to return the vehicle back to its reference point measurement that you took. So do that on both sides and you're good to go. So let's show you the wireless controller and the tire inflation facility. There we go guys. Thanks for watching. Now remember, bag it with the best. <laughs> <laughs>